When it comes to laptops, I have two daily drivers. One is my personal M1 MacBook Air that I've had for about three years now, and the other one is a fully loaded 16-inch MacBook Pro I got from work, which I also use daily. This is an interesting setup because one of these laptops is basically the most entry-level laptop that Apple has to offer, and the other one is on the other end of the spectrum, being the most expensive, high-powered option they have. But after using these both for almost three years, I've learned the most expensive isn't always the best, so I wanted to make a quick buyer's guide based on my long-term use of these two laptops and talk about their main differences and things you don't necessarily realize until you actually own one of these and use it on a daily basis. MacBook Pro is obviously the way to go if you're doing any intense tasks that require the maximum power, but for pretty much any other type of use, I usually grab my MacBook Air instead. You don't really realize how thick and heavy the MacBook Pro is until you pick it up and hold it. It's super thick and heavy compared to the Air. Now, within the MacBook Air lineup, there's some differences too. The M1 version is super thin, while the M2 and M3 versions of MacBook Air are slightly thicker. Also, one big factor when it comes to size and weight is the screen size. I have a 13-inch MacBook Air and 16-inch MacBook Pro, but you can also get the Air as a 15-inch model and the Pro as a 14-inch model. I wrote a more in-depth comparison between the models on my blog, which I'll link in the description below. But to make a long story short, one 16-inch MacBook Pro weighs almost as much as two 13-inch MacBook Air models. And if comparing the biggest Pro model to the smallest Air model feels unfair, even the 14-inch MacBook Pro weights more than the 15-inch MacBook Air. Not by much, but it's still heavier, even with a smaller display. So for any casual browsing or using my laptop on the go, I prefer the MacBook Air. It's lighter, easy to carry around, and the 13-inch display is just big enough for simple tasks that it's my go-to laptop for most tasks. For anything that requires multitasking, or if you do longer sessions using applications like Photoshop or video editing software, you'll want an external monitor. And while the 16-inch MacBook Pro display is noticeably bigger, it's still not big enough to be comfortably used as a standalone monitor for full work days, so you're going to need that external monitor with either laptop. All the laptops using Apple Silicon, meaning the ones that have either M1, M2, or M3 chips, have an incredible battery life. And while the MacBook Air's battery life is great, the MacBook Pro absolutely crushes it. This is where that thick body pays off. It can fit a significantly larger battery. And if you're coming from an Intel-based Mac, we're talking about battery life you've never seen before. This MacBook Pro is the first computer I've had that I can comfortably take to the office with me and leave the charger home because I know it'll last all day without needing to charge it. I always knew the battery life on these models is good, but I didn't fully understand how good it is until I started using mine. Another thing where the MacBook Pro beats the air is the ports. On my M1 MacBook Air, there's two Thunderbolt ports and a headphone jack. That's it. If you connect it to a charger, you're left with one Thunderbolt port. That gets tough very fast when you're trying to connect an external monitor an external hard drive, or an SD card reader. Yes, there are dongles and adapters, but I quickly learned that dealing with only two ports is a major pain. It's fine when I'm using the laptop on my couch without any external devices, which honestly is what the smaller MacBook Airs are designed for. But if you're trying to use it on a desk with a bunch of external devices, you'll get frustrated quick. The M2 and M3 models luckily have a separate charging port, leaving the Thunderbolt ports available for other devices, so that's a huge upgrade already. But comparing to the MacBook Pro, which has three Thunderbolt ports, an SD card slot, HDMI port, a headphone jack, and a separate charging port, it's clearly the winner when it comes to ports. Another thing I want to highlight is the speakers. Most people don't really care about laptop speakers because since the beginning of time, Laptop speakers have always sucked. But the speakers on the MacBook Pro actually blew me away when I first had them. They sound really good for laptop speakers. The 14-inch model has the same speakers as the 16-inch MacBook Pro, so you'll get the same quality regardless which model you choose. My MacBook Air, on the other hand, sounds pretty much like any other laptop. 
Apple says they've improved the speakers in the M2 and M3 MacBook Air models, but I haven't had a chance to test those myself. But based on specs, they're better than the M1 MacBook Air, but not as good as the MacBook Pro speakers. And then lastly, the price. Prices are sort of fluctuating as new models come out, so I'll put a link in the description where you can check the current pricing. But right now, the MacBook Air starts around $900, and you might be able to find the M1 model for as low as $650. 16-inch MacBook Pro starts at around $2,500, so it's significantly more expensive. There's no denying the MacBook Pro is a very capable machine, but for that money, I would personally pick a Mac Studio, since you'll need an external monitor for any serious work anyway. Ordering directly from Apple is always a good way to get your Mac, but I'm a big fan of checking the prices at other retailers first. Apple never does discounts on their products, but many online retailers do. For example, right now Apple sells the 16-inch MacBook Pro for $2,500, while some retailers have the same exact model available for $300 less. So do your research before buying, and check the links in the description of this video for all the current offers and discounts. So which model should you choose? That depends what's important to you. If you're using the laptop for work and need maximum efficiency, it's often worth the extra money to invest in a MacBook Pro. If you're a casual user, 99% of the time you're going to be happy with a MacBook Air. Even if you do some intense work like photo and video editing on your laptop, there are many students and hobbyists who are getting some serious work done on their MacBook Airs. So just because you edit videos for YouTube doesn't necessarily mean that you have to invest in a MacBook Pro. Even the base model MacBook Air can handle more than most people think. I have a pretty good stress test video about how much my base model MacBook Air can take, and I'll link that below if you're interested. Here's some questions to ask yourself when making a decision. And again, head over to our blog if you want to read more about the differences between each model. Let me know your thoughts. What would you pick from the current lineup? I'm super happy with my MacBook Air, and if I was buying a laptop now, I would probably go with the 15-inch MacBook Air. I think it's the perfect balance between lightweight portability, large enough screen, and decent power for most users. The Pro models are nice too. They're just pretty damn pricey and heavy. I've heard rumors that the upcoming models will be a lot thinner, similar to the new iPads, but only time will tell if that's true or not. Thanks for watching, guys. If this helped you at all, hit that like button, consider subscribing, and I hope to see you all in the next video.